You may have heard of this little thing called an iPhone. A little. It's, well, the original ones are kind of little. They're getting they much are, bigger. They got tiny, didn't they? Anyway, um, the biggest iPhone factory in Zhengzhou, mm. um, well, there's been some problems there. Yeah? Like what? Well, some people died, apparently. Okay. Now, this is apparently, because they kind of deny it, but one of the dorm rooms, which had, I think, eight people in it, Apparently, all eight people inside the dorm died. They were under lockdown, okay? COVID lockdown stuff, usual stuff. You know, you're not allowed to leave your room. They give you like a pittance of food. You don't know what's going on. Anyway, apparently, the people died in this dorm room. Sure. Whether that's true or not, we cannot say. Right. What is true is that the factory, which this, this huge factory, this compound, which has 200,000 people in it. Now, can you imagine 200,000 people? Um, well, that's the population of where I grew up, the yeah. whole city. I mean, that's the thing. You can imagine maybe like 50 people in a place, maybe 100 people. Let's let's put 1,000. Now you're talking about a lot of people. Or you could say 4,000 people. That's how many people are watching us right now. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. yeah. So you've got that many people. Let's say more. And then just multiply that by however much. That many people. <laughs> by that many. <laughs> yeah, that by many Whatever people. number that is. Yeah, just you multiply, multiply that. Yeah. Work out the math. <laughs> you do the work, okay? But no, quite seriously. <laughs> it's five, you know, times 50. Dude, so. 200,000 people yeah. is a huge amount. Like you said, it's a population of a city yes. in this factory, okay? Yeah. So they decide they're going to lock everybody down. People are tired of these lockdowns, by the way. Let's just be honest. It's not worth it. You're Think about it. You're earning... Your very minimal wage as a factory worker. Mm. And the way it works in China is most people are migrant workers that work in factories. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they come from a small hometown somewhere. They're living out in a rural area. Their life is very simple. Okay, it's very cheap. They don't have to pay for anything. Everything is dirt cheap, but you live in a dirt poor situation. You go to the city for a couple of months to a year, maybe two years, five years max, earn a lot of money, go back to your rural countryside, and you live there with the money you've earned you can live for like a decade you know a lot of people do that in china yeah. they'll go in and work for a year go back to their hometown and then they can just chill out for five years on what they've earned and then they go work for another year and rinse and repeat right yeah so you've got these people they, they're earning a very small amount in the factory um, and they're willing to live in these cramped conditions all crammed into tiny little dorm dormitories and they work very long hours and it's not a good existence mm -hmm. to be honest but now imagine you're told you now have to be quarantined and locked down. So now you're stuck. You're not earning money anymore, right? When you're stuck in your dorm. No. Because you can't be working. You're under lockdown. Your freedom of movement is stuck. You, you know, you're hearing about people dying. You're just like, I'm out of here. Yeah. And that's what happened, okay? Is this mass exodus of people. Tens of thousands of people, apparently. They're all like, screw it. So they try to leave. You can see some footage behind us here. And the way they left is on foot because, of course, you can't get on a train because of the lockdowns. You can't board a plane. None of them can afford that anyway. No. Migrant workers like this don't no have way. money for a plane ticket or even a train ticket. They'd have to take a slow train. Now, apparently, groups of them organized buses to come and pick them up from their hometowns. They kind of clubbed together and phone or whatever, but they weren't allowed to leave. So they were trying to walk out. OK, on the highways to get out of the city so that they could find a way, get picked up or whatever. Right. Get yeah. their way home. But they were being blocked, as you can see, by walls of Dubai. Yeah. Um, the basically the police and everyone's been trying to stop them from leaving. The factory's been trying to stop them from leaving, trying to offer them, you know, higher wages if they stay. But people are finding any way possible to get back to their hometowns, whether it be on the back of trucks or on foot, as you can see them walking there with their uh, luggage and just sitting on the side of the road. Um, and it's it's a crazy situation. It's like a zombie apocalypse kind of a situation where mm. people are just trying to escape the city, you know? Yeah. Escape the disgusting, terrible conditions they're in and escape the lockdowns, you know? Yeah. It's pretty intense if you think about what's going on. Oh, it's so poorly planned. I mean, this mm. really just shows you that there was no thought about the zero COVID thing. Yeah. It was no like, they're like, oh, this is a great control mechanism. We can change everyone's app from yeah. green to yellow to red to lock people down in a certain place. Yeah. But they don't really think about, hey, maybe people will freak out and, and not want to be in that lockdown, right? And yeah. they're going to go to crazy measures to get out of that situation. Yeah. And that's their worst nightmare. Yeah. You know? 
because people are just leaving and you know it's 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 just a horrible situation to see people having to walk for who knows how long on the highways brave the elements you yeah. know in this terrible weather and ter you know with their luggage and stuff just to try and get home to try and escape these brutal lockdowns yeah um it's really just a, a ridiculous kind of a situation um big trucks you know yeah you know in uh shanghai there's a foreigner who they they would lock down the the school or whatever mm -hmm. and he escaped because he was like f this so they said lockdown like he was positive he was just no no the there was just yeah. like a so he escaped and uh ran back to his uh his home like his you know his, Huayu, his, apartment, yeah. his apartment complex because he'd been um in that lockdown area you know, because if you're in a lockdown area, your phone, your QR code will go yellow or red or whatever, mm -hmm. right? So because he'd been in that lockdown area, he ran to his his apartment. So then his whole building went into lockdown. It's because like of him. contagious. The yeah, yeah, the contagious. app is contagious, not him. <laughs> yeah. And he actually got arrested, and he did. Uh, th he's in jail he for dine? three weeks. Oh, three weeks. Okay. But still, he got arrested for He'll doing that. Get deported that. as well. Probably. I'm pretty yeah. sure yeah. it was a dumb thing for him to do. Yeah. Thinking he could get away with it. That's the thing. You're monitored so closely. I don't think people realize how much they have this lockdown. As crazy as this looks, it's chaos, right? Yeah. But the the actual like phys the physical evidence of you leaving and trying to get away or going to different places you never escape that no you're never going to be off the grid that's the thing these um apps that you have on your phone which have your qr code mm -hmm. your green or yellow or red mm -hmm. qr code it's tied to your location yeah you cannot turn off locations on it right so wherever no. you go the app knows uh, right? gullman and roger 662 says turn off your phone god damn it no 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 uh. You can't just turn off your you phone. You can't. It still follows you. You. That's the thing. You need that app. Yes. Okay? You need that app in order to access anything. Anything. You can't buy tickets. Yeah. You can't... You can't. Uh, half of the freaking supermarkets you can't even get into. No, you can't get into supermarkets. You cannot get into your home complex. You need to scan it. You can't yeah. get into a shopping mall. You can't do anything without that code. So, I mean, not only does it geo track you where you walk, yeah, but every you, time it gets it scanned, <laughs> even if it get it scanned, then it knows exactly where you are at any given time from the yes. when it's been scanned. You know, these people so, are, are you guys are so are, are really thoughtful to think about ways they can get around this. But you I'm can't. telling you, you can't. If turning you try, off your phone doesn't stop the GPS location. If you try to, if you try to disable your mm. tracking in any way, shape, or form, you will be penalized for it. They will. They yeah. will get you for messing with it, you know? Phone off, SIM card out, then you can't do anything. You can't live. Yeah. You can't shop. You can't buy anything. You can't do anything. You can't board a train. It. You nope. can't, you know, you, you can't. can't. You can't pay do a anything. bill. No. Nope. You can't buy a meal. No. You can't go to the supermarket. You can't put your kid in school. No. Nope. You can't get in a taxi. You nope. can't get on the train. You can't get on. I'm, you literally can't do anything. No, there's nothing. You can't. You can't use the internet. No. You, you need to have your QR code that says you're green. Yeah. And that's the problem is it's so embedded. And I think that's what people don't seem to understand in the West is they take freedoms for granted, like being yeah. able to just do your own thing. Yeah. It's like being able to turn off your phone if you don't want to be monitored. But you can't do that in China because they've built the system so that you can't do it. Yes. Anyway, um, now we're going to move on to perhaps uh, a fairly familiar scene. I don't know if you guys remember this, but remember Wuhan pool party? Does anyone remember this? Where like um, Wuhan, where the you know the COVID came from, right? Yes. From from Wuhan, the initial outbreak was there, and then no, it's where it came from too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's where it came from, and that's uh, the initial outbreak was there. Can I have so, cough drop, please? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Here you go. Drop, drop the cough. You know. Anyway, so they had this massive pool party to celebrate that. Oh, guess what? We've beaten COVID, and while the rest of the world suffers. We're going to show off that our zero COVID It was works. actually by design. It was like yeah. a big uh, middle finger. Mm. It was like, you guys are in lockdown, but we got rid of COVID in the beginning. Yeah. You know, most of America was like, what do you mean lockdown? Because yeah. like, it wasn't like China. It wasn't no. like China style lockdown. Dude, do you know that a lot of the foreigners that are still in China uh, that I talked to and uh, some of the people that can't stand our guts and so on, uh, they still think that for some reason... Um, they're all safe, and the rest of the world is all suffering, mm. and, and like in a bad way. Yeah, so not the people I'm friends with, but they have people, they're friends with people there or mm -hmm. know people there. 
that are convinced like holy crap we dodged a bullet by by being in china here yeah because like then now we don't have to die of covid and and their friends are like what are you talking about yeah what are you talking about exactly dying of covid right now it's like that it's this weird delusion mm. that everyone outside of china is suffering from covid in a very bad way but people in china are healthy and safe yeah and everything's okay but it's the opposite in china it's just horrible stories about people yeah getting stuck in these terrible situations because of the lockdowns, people dying of starvation, mental health issues, suicide, mm. all this crap that's going on. Um, the rest of the world is just kind of the way it was before COVID. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're not getting tested every day or every twice a day sometimes, or every 48 hours, you're not mm -hmm. getting this thing shoved down your nose and you're not locked in your apartment or wherever it is. Anyway, they did this pool party. Yeah. To laugh at the world and say, look, we beat it. We suffered the lockdowns, but now we get to have a pool party. Everyone gets to have so much fun. Yeah. Doesn't that look fun to be crammed all together like that? Actually, though? doesn't look like fun at all, to be honest. Uh, it looks absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, they had this crazy outlandish pool party as prop, basically like it was propaganda. counter propaganda. It was propaganda. But now mm. guess what? Wuhan is, is back to lockdown big time. Mm. How's that for a pool party? But you know what the difference is? What? Is that China was trying to get their citizens to celebrate mm -hmm. the Western decline, the fact that the West had to suffer and that they didn't. Yeah. And nobody's laughing at China right now. No. No one's sitting there going, eh, hey, idiots. Yeah. You know, everyone feels bad for mm -hmm. the fact that Chinese people have to go through this shit. Yeah, of course. You know? Anyway. Uh, so yeah, just to let you know, Wuhan now is in, in a bad way. So anyway, the fact of the matter is Wuhan right now is under terrible lockdown. And now in Wuhan, they're getting a bit annoyed, as you can tell, tearing down testing stations. Um, you see these testing stations, right? Those mm -hmm. are those are choke points. Mm -hmm. If you want to either get in or get out, see that's his Bayman over there, which means Northern Gate. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to go in or get out of, for instance, um, uh, your apartment complex or a subway station or whatever the case may be, you have to go through these choke points where you get tested, right? Yeah. Um, or you have to go line up to be tested, and the, the people here are like, obviously, screw that, and they're just breaking down the testing station, so they That's don't right. don't have to be stuck getting tested every five minutes. You know what's crazy is that just pause it there. I just want yeah. some perspective. Uh, you know, like in the beginning when you saw people kind of rebelling against the whole zero COVID thing, mm -hmm. it was like massive headline breaking news mm. to have one little, almost like a, if we had a handful of people inside of one apartment complex. Yeah kind of freaking out and the cops show up that became like that would be like headline news in the west yeah this is happening so often now mm. these massive protests and outlashings and like bringing in the swat teams sometimes the military and stuff is pretty commonplace in china now right um i just want people to have perspective of how much this has changed mm. there is a boiling point and i hate this perspective that hey people are just you know they're fine with it <laughs> you no, know what i mean no, they're, they're not. not they're not fine with it. So um, this this is a clip from Guangzhou over here, where they're busy taking children off to quarantine camp, and that just yeah, I mean it just again it puts a different different perspective on all of this, okay? Because now you're going to be separated from your parents, you're going to be doing taken the, off separating to, the kids thing again. Take you off to quarantine camp. Um, it's it's rubbish, you know. It's a rubbish system. It's a very bad system. It's bad for humanity. What what they're doing right now is disgusting. And the mm. chemicals that keep spraying on everyone and everything and killing everything, you know, it's mm. just, it's it's such a poorly executed idea. Yeah. And the fact that they keep going on with it is the biggest mistake that I think that China's made in since the you know, Great Leap backwards and the cultural devolution. What they're yeah. doing now, it's just, what are you doing? The yeah. zero COVID policy is destroying people's lives. It's destroying the economy. It's destroying China. It is. It's disgusting. You know, I don't understand why they have to be so belligerent and so freaking stubborn about it. 
you know? Yeah. It's bad. Don't do it. No. Um, anyway, so, like I said, just it affects everyone. Uh, in Lanzhou, up in, in western, northwestern China. So, yeah. kind of like on the way to Xinjiang, basically. Yeah. But Best it's, it's ramen ever. Yes, yeah, amazing. The Lanzhou Lanzhou Lanzhou, Lanzhou, yeah. It's great. Anyway, long story short, uh, a kid, a three-year-old kid died. Right? Yes. And he died because he was trapped in the, his apartment. I think it was a girl. A girl, sorry. Yeah. Uh, the kid died in the apartment, right? Mm-hmm. Now, what happened was there wasn't any emergency uh, rescue staff that could get up to to help the kid. They because of the even, COVID restrictions. Because of the COVID restrictions. Me- meanwhile, they weren't even able to get the kid out, even though only about 800 meters away, there's yeah. a hospital. There's a hospital 850 meters away, yeah. Right. Him or her, I can't remember if it's a boy or a girl. Yeah. Um, to get the kid over there, yeah. right? And this could have been easily dealt with yeah. if you could break that simple rule because the kid needed to uh, Im- immediate medical attention. Yeah, right? so the, the child was, you know, incredibly sick. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, this is the most important thing is that there would have, there was time to save the child's life, yeah. okay? But they couldn't, because of the COVID restrictions, save the child. Yes. And... I mean, we've seen the footage. We're not going to show it to you, but we've seen the footage of the dead child. I mean, it's it's circulating Horrible. around. It's terrible. Um, and, of course, all the residents are furious yeah. because nobody was willing to help the child. And then um, the official announcement from the Lanzhou Public Security Bureau was what? The, so they said that the gas stove yeah. in their apartment, mm-hmm. it went off, so the it child leaked. asphyxiated, right? Yeah. They blamed it on the they gas stove. They blamed it on the gas stove. So... This is what they put out there, and they basically used it as an opportunity to say, hey, everyone be mindful of your gas stove. Yeah. Be really careful and safe. Mm-hmm. The public lost it. Yeah. They went absolutely crazy, because yeah. think about it. You have officials covering up the death of this child that was yeah. due to malpractice yeah. and due to the zero COVID policy. Everyone freaks out, so they bring in the SWAT team. They bring in the military have a look yeah yeah so yeah they blamed it on the gas leak and whether it was a gas leak or not the child is you know sick but still alive and needs medical attention yeah whether it was a gas leak that caused that or not doesn't freaking matter yeah it's the fact that the covid restrictions are blocking people in their houses and not not allowing uh people to get medical attention when they need it yes so yeah the residents kind of went wild and we've seen a huge and that's why earlier the, I was saying the, the military stuff was kid riot because they had to bring in the military and riot teams and stuff to stop. It was huge. Yeah. It's very, there was a very big uprising because of this, the death of this child. Mm. So people have had it. They're like, what are you doing here? You know? Right. Yeah. This, you can see him coming in. I mean, to think that all of this, all of this crap is over, you know, what is now pretty much just a mild flu. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You have to bring in the military. Children are dying, uh, not from the disease, but because of the disease, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know? Because of the, the handling of the disease. Yeah. What was the point of that? They all like came up with their riot shields and Let's like, show a presence, right? And then ran off to the next place. He I wanted guess. to show that huge clip that was also part of it. Yeah. Um, they had to really deploy a lot of people to stop the protests because, you know, you can block all you want on the internet, but word of mouth, you know, your neighbor tells you, hey, did you hear this kid died? You yeah. Know, because of zero COVID and that might happen to our, our, uh, our apartment complex. You know, sure. what about the kids here? And people get riled up. Yeah, what about like, hey, uh, the you're old right. people? Yeah. Let's take this shit down, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, people lost it, as and rightfully so. Yeah. So there's been a lot of craziness. A lot of unrest. Yeah, really. Like we said, China's on the brink of something big here because it's all been happening at the same time. Yeah. You know, all these iPhone factories, the, the Lanzhou, um, you know, uprisings here, the Wuhan lockdowns again. It's, you know, it's all suddenly just ramping up. And, you know, it just once again shows you how stupid these greedy investors are to throw their money into China. I mean, you got to be you got to be sick. Yeah, you got to be sick and you got to be a greedy piece of shit, kind of like uh, like a Hollywood villain. Yeah, like a, a Weinstein or something. Yeah, yeah. you got to be <laughs> yeah. Weinstein. You basically <laughs> if you're investing in China right now. Yeah, 
you got to have like something massively wrong with your ball sack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's got to be a figure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got to be weird. Yeah, no, look, it's a, it's a it's a real crazy situation. And the government has been telling all the local government leaders to resolutely double down on zero yeah. covid. Yeah. So, all these well, this one rumor that went out there that oh they might mm. relax in they might yeah. look at ways to relax it in March. Now people are like, yes, let's yes. invest. I'm telling you, they're at the gates going, like, let us like in. freaking animals, like I know, starving seriously. animals. What are you doing? Throw us a crumb, China. A bit, just so we were strand of wool, please. <laughs> yeah, it's it's freaking annoying. You know what I mean? It's like a, when you're seeing what like how people's lives are being destroyed all over China, but you're like, yes, now's a good time to invest. Yeah. You know, it's just it's frustrating. Get what's mine, you know? Yeah. It's Jesus frustrating. Shit. Yeah. Ah, absolute. Wanker. I know that's all they are. They're just wankers, fucking investment wankers. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know instead of an investment banker. Yes. In fact, an investment yes. banker is a slang for wanker in uh, in copy it is. slang. It or is because it's rhymes. He's right. a right investment banker. That that bloke. You know. Anyway. Ah! Ah!